guys, welcome back. It's uh, it's the Consectives. It's your boy Chukes. And your girl Sherry. All right. So this whole color scheme was Sherry's idea. I feel thoroughly embarrassed. <laughs> it's her you fault. You think I don't think it's silly too? <laughs> well, but you're the one that set it up. Yeah. You hit rock and red and you're green. My ideas. Yeah. All right. Awesome ideas. So today, actually, what we're trying to do, we're going to be kind of giving a little bit of a wrap up of 2020. It's been a great year. It's how I like to look at it. Despite everything, uh, we always everything is uh, we we always have a positive outlook on things. Of course, we have gone through a lot, but um, yeah, we're gonna try to give you guys a little bit of a roundup of 2020 when it comes to the tech world, <laughs> and then we're also kind of kind of have a little bit of uh, projections for 2021. You know, you know, we're gonna talk you know job wise. We're gonna talk um you know language and language wise and you know just all around things you could be doing pertaining to uh programming technology and all that cool stuff so yeah. first on the agenda <laughs> yeah i'm thinking of getting rid of it too all right first on the agenda what the uh what was what was the thing you were going to talk about well just like what happened in 2020 yeah. tech wise um even coding. Okay. So a lot of things have changed because of the coronavirus. Okay. It has made everyone in terms of companies, small businesses, move towards online online presence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a lot of people realized like too late that having the technical um, capabilities and investing in tech mm. was something that they kind of put on the the back burner yeah as in they were they weren't ready to fully invest in the technology but um but they were still able to get by doing the way the way that they were doing things right but because of coronavirus you know that changed businesses drastically so they had to move their businesses that were you know, maybe in store, in person, and move that online. Because I know so many small companies who didn't want to fully invest in tech have now realized that they need to put more emphasis on it. Oh, uh, yeah, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, a lot of, you know, fundamentals when it comes to the workplace has also changed. You know, people are working from home, and a lot of businesses are realizing that hey, maybe we don't need employees to be at the office. So now they're saving in office space by having individuals work from home. And they're also realizing how much more flexible and, and you know, how much more work can actually be done in some cases. And it also puts your managerial skills to the test. Mm -hmm. And what I mean is, you know, when you have people working on, at their homes, this is where you really test the culture. Do people really like actually working there? And you see productive, productive, that productivity actually increases or does it decrease and things like that. So a lot of people are getting a whole lot of interesting dynamic. I think going forward in 2021, uh, one of the biggest things is people are going to realize the, cause, uh, the demand for being online facing. They're going to make sure their social media is... Uh, it's up to par. Their websites, you know, their ordering services, anything that lets people see them online first, because most of the time people find these restaurants or small businesses online first. Mm -hmm. No one just walks around and stumbles upon an antique shop. You know, it's rare, especially yeah. now that when you know when we had the lockdown, not everyone is going out. So it's very important, and I think that's going to be, you know, crucial for businesses, especially small businesses yeah. going forward in 2021. Oh, yeah. So I have something to say about that. A lot of these small, like like mom and pop shops that yeah. you're probably referencing, they have no funding, no way, no idea mm. how to get their shop online, right? They only know how to start it off in the physical locations, right? Yeah. But the great thing is that we have an amazing community, especially here in in Dallas mm -hmm. and oh, I'm sure in whatever city you are, there's always a group that connects people, right? Mm -hmm. And what I found is mainly the restaurant um, industry yeah. that has been hit um, pretty heavily by this COVID. They were they were actually supported through um, these groups on Facebook. Gotcha. 
um, that's how they were getting recognized. Yeah. And by sharing these posts, they were able to get so much more orders and just awareness that their place exists. And I'm sure that without the the groups on Facebook, they wouldn't have been able to survive. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's a great point. And, you know, yeah, that's definitely going to be very important for people uh, going forward, especially, you know, some small businesses, you probably should get really acquainted with, uh, you know, social media, because that's something we're also trying to work on mm-hmm. on ourselves. We're trying to make sure we can we can really have this interaction and engagement with our audience yeah. on our social media. And it's tough, but it's something you need as a small business owner or any, in fact, honestly, any business. I don't think there's any business that's, well, I guess maybe if you're really a middleman or a subcontractor, be I don't know. But yeah, if you're trying to start a business, definitely really get your online space uh, up to par. It will definitely help you. It's very important. But uh, I think that's really obvious to most people at this point. Yeah, that's <laughs> obvious. But some people have this like preconception in just image that social media is for these social media influencers Mm -hmm. like a negative connotation but it doesn't always have to be that way like for us you know social media is something that we kind of struggle with because it's it actually takes a lot of work right (laughs) it's i mean i think um what they call it social media managers uh will definitely be a, a job that is not just on demand but necessary as yeah. And I think anyone now, if you even have an inkling of if you're savvy in, in managing, you know, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, you could really be working with a bunch of companies around your local area and just help them manage their social media postings every day. And I mm-hmm. think that's a that's that could that's actually a, a really smart way to take advantage of of, uh, you know, the times, you know, yeah. just say, hey. You, I know you don't have, you know, social media presence. Let me handle this. Pay me this much. I'll go create the website. It'll be a basic website, you know, just a forward uh, landing page. Let people know where you are, what times you operate, how to make an order, make everything third party, APIs and everything. And you can do this for all of them, have a template. And I really think that's a, you know, that's a really smart way to start a business before you know it. You have five clients that are paying you regularly. Yeah, I, I'm really thinking, why didn't I do something like that? Yeah, that's uh, the thing. You don't want to look... People always look down on those people, but mm. it really is a job in itself, oh, right? Yeah, most definitely. Like, you're, you're the photographer. You're the model. You're the content creator. You're the brand manager. You're, you're the... Um, what's it called? The person that goes out to to get more yeah. um advertising yeah i mean, I mean we, that's how advertising has changed yeah. ad content has changed uh, over yeah. to these uh using social media influencers um instead of your traditional tv broadcasting yeah. or radio broadcasting what's what's interesting is that you know we went we went yesterday to uh taco shop um with our with um, my brother's girlfriend and she used a term that was so interesting to me, which was before we eat, we let the camera eat. The camera eats first. That was so weird. Um, but we spent, what, you guys spent over an hour taking photos, making <laughs> videos. <laughs> More like Stephanie did. Yeah. So it, it was a long, pro- arduous process. And, uh, you know, I wasn't Mad exactly for, for her. Yeah, it, exactly. It's it's not, in of itself, it's look down on it as all you want. But when I saw her posting, she got she got hits. And you had almost like a hundred people talking about it, tagging other people, and it's just a, it's just a compounding effect. And you know, um, let's say if every fifty people, one person checks it out, at least if attain two customers, and now they, uh, it just in that first hour. And of course, it has probably blown up further than that. But it's it's just incredible. You know, these things do work. I mean, it's obvious, but. You, you know, it's just, I guess a lot of people are just catching up to it now, um, especially mom and pops. Of course, they're in a different era, so they're not used to it. But going forward, um, that's definitely something that's going to be far more prominent, especially social media management, mm-hmm. um, websites, things like that. Uh, it's probably a good time to be a freelancer now if you're yeah. a web, web developer, you know, because many of these people don't know about, like, uh, 
you know, Fiverr, all these cheaper places you can get it. I say cheaper. I don't want to be like you're trying to just hide them from. But I mean more like, you know, they probably want someone they can talk to that understands them and that's in their community. So it's a good opportunity to learn, get, get into this, and you can start your own company just providing. I mean, that's how all these, uh, you know, Bottle Rocket and all these companies have. You know, they just yeah. work with but it's not just around. like from Fiverr or like online. Even if you reach out throughout your community, I know a lot of people have done that um, through different groups, business groups, um, tech groups, um, and that's how someone found me as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just go into the shop. You can just talk to them. If they don't have a website, they say, "Hey, you know, I can help you guys with a website. Sure. Create them a basic website that just shows, you know, just one page. Doesn't even have to have anything, and that does so much more because." Everything is online. Yeah. Um, Another uh, part of freelancing, mm -hmm. um, and like a huge hit in 2020, is of course podcasting. Podcasting. Yeah. yeah. And not that's part of freelancing as well. Um, podcasting, YouTube channels. Yeah. Uh, and we see this. We see this as in like we know this is happening because these mics are flying off the shelves and yeah, they're being definitely. sold out like <laughs> over and over, time yeah. and time again. Yeah. So. Yeah, uh, podcasting has been a huge hit, and it will only increase from here. Mm. Um, this audio listening experience is something that it gravitates towards people who want t to like hear um, content on the go, right? Yeah. And not having to actively watch something like on YouTube. So yeah. we know for sure that. Um, 2020 has been a huge hit for podcasting mm -hmm. podcasters and same thing for 2021. I think it's only going to continue forward yeah. in that direction. Definitely. And now if we also talk about, uh, I guess, going forward, uh, job prospects for, uh, upcoming developers or people trying to get into the, you know, into technology, there's a lot, of course, a lot of companies are making a lot of moves. We have Tesla, uh, you know, slated to come to, uh, Texas, uh, I don't really have much information on that as to where they'll be going. Probably um, Austin. Probably Austin, uh, maybe. Uh, so, and then you also have Google is saying that they're going to consider an office over here. Of course, I don't know how In Austin. You know, important <laughs> these things are. Um, they might, I mean, what would be, that could be possible, or they would go somewhere that has not been developed yet to oh. save on, on a lot of money. Yeah. You know? Because they know people are going to follow them. No, it's it's so, like in the, on the outskirts of Austin, maybe yeah, near... Yeah, so probably... Um, yeah, because um, most likely, because to build one of their gigafactories, they need a lot of space. And that's why I'm kind of keeping an eye on the news, because they usually announce all these excavations, a huge clearing of uh, land. So that's usually where big companies go in. And, oh, it's already happened. You know, uh, oh, it has? Yeah, they're, they actually have a... Or they already have an existing... Um, they don't have a planned location? Tesla? I don't know, but I just know that they've had an existing location for yeah. uh, their factories oh, really? um, out in Waco. Oh, yeah. So this is an opportunity for people in real estate, you know, definitely buy houses around that. Um, really smart way to buy apartments. Uh, if you are starting a business, you know, keep that in mind. There's so many things, you know, you can play around these huge companies. Uh, but that aside development jobs you know that also means that a lot of uh developer jobs will come here if google or these other bigger companies come here apple who knows uh, so you can always look around your you know local area to see what jobs are about to start changing like in dallas i know angular is kind of popular right but react is like not i don't want to say steadily quickly overtaken like most jobs are not react um, so that's something to consider. So JavaScript uh, development is, of course, still on the rise. In terms well of front-end frameworks, yeah. yeah. Um, we only say this as in the existing, I would say the existing platforms are on Angular. But mm -hmm. going forward, a lot of companies choose React over Angular because of quicker, faster uh, turnout for the development. Hey. And also, not only React is getting popular, yeah. Vue is actually increasingly, like exponentially, <laughs> becoming becoming more popular. Yeah, and do you know what's uh, uh, interesting is you know how um, you know how kind of like how MySpace came and went. 
like its era came and went and everyone was saying the same would happen for Facebook. I mean that Facebook is old. And of course right now you can say Facebook is old, but it's still it's still more than relevant as in there's still a lot of users there, right? Well yeah. The so, thing with MySpace is that it only captured a certain demographic of people. Well well, not exactly in that case. It's kind of more so let's say ah, sorry about that. <laughs> but it's more so let's say, um, what I'm trying, the point I'm trying to make is really like, okay, so MySpace did its thing and kind of went off. Whereas Facebook, even though it was supposed to kind of have fallen off, has still kept going. And that's because most companies now, they, they're, they're so forward thinking, right? The second something new comes out, they adapt it, they buy it. You can think Amazon, you can think uh, Facebook, Google. These companies are constantly forward thinking. They're constantly looking for the next change, next hot thing, and they adapt it quickly. So I'm, I'm kind of thinking that's how, I don't, of course, I don't really know, but I'm thinking React will kind of follow the way because when you think about it, right, uh, many languages come and go, right? They have their, they serve their purpose and, and they go. Um, React, on the other hand, is constantly evolving. I mean, it is so different from the first time it came out. Yeah. So they're constantly saying, hey, we're going to introduce this, we're going to introduce this. So I don't know if it's going to be a situation where, um, uh, you know, two years down the line, we're still using React, but a different version and not just the new, like, not just Spelt or something. I mean, and that's just something I've always been thinking about. Is it going to be React just constantly evolving, constantly getting better and bigger and you know, doing more, or is it going to be React is going to stop at one point and Svelte is going to take over and Svelte is going to stop at one point and then this guy's, you know what I mean? So I'm just, because again, React has been just evolving. So is that the trend or is it going to just keep the same uh, setup? So I mean, yeah, it, front end is, is changing more quickly than back end. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, but also going off of that, um, Vue is actually, I would say Vue would in the future, if it's not already now competing with React, Vue and React. So, so React is already the new Angular, but in the future, Vue is going to be the new React. Well, why do you say that? Um, as as uh, React does, they're always coming out with newer versions, newer additions um, that make it more robust. Mm. Vue has also done the same. Vue, Vue had like his their first version, their uh, or like ground zero version their first version and yeah. now there is um a second version of Vue. yeah i mean i i won't deny that you know when you look at react and view yeah they're, they're clearly very evolving and most people who actually go from react to view say they like view better um i tried it i eh, wasn't really feeling it but um i think you know i don't know if uh, view is taking over react uh, i remember yet. i remember when uh you know i was over at uh uh, match and you know we had this discussion where if view was taken over and at that time it was like yeah de definitely view is going to be taken over i mean it's hot at that time you know it was really really hot um but no companies were adapting it and you know the reasons why is that yeah it's a great language but i mean great framework but so is react you know uh it's not that um one is worse than the other it's just different, and if, if if React is working just fine, what's the point of readapting? Do you know what I mean? Well, the thing is, React has has such a huge backing, like a huge community exactly, exactly um, backing it up. That's also also very partially true. because of Facebook. Um, Vue, though, I would say is a little bit different than React. For a lot of companies who want to uh, spin out something really fast, mm. especially in the year of 2020, mm. Vue has caught up so quickly because. People will choose Vue over React because because of that reason, because they're in in a time crunch and they needed to get something um, like built, just mm. like that comes out of the box and built into production as fast as possible. Mm. I mean, yeah, there's there's definitely that appeal. And there's another framework, um, Ember, that has also kind of brought back into popularity because mm. of also production reasons of being able to um, reduce error in production um, and deployment. But you see, and the thing is, although, yeah, that, these are all very true, but then you realize that React has all of these in excess. And here's what I mean. Like, there's React 
with TypeScript now. And I think, and that, that side of it is getting really robust. In fact, the community is trending that way. So you now have this error, you know, error typing, uh, react sure, language yeah. that's now really you know uh, that prevents a lot of bugs and then there's the out of the box react code if you need to get something you know you got gatsby you have next you have all these uh frameworks and packages that come with it so you can just say okay all right i need headless cms i need um you know i need a database you know you just have all these packages that are just ready to go so yeah i mean honestly we can't really predict the future it's just because what makes a company adapt, you know, because migrating to a new software is very difficult, very expensive, very time consuming and halts new features like significantly. So for a company to adapt it, new companies might, but, you know, you'll just have to, because you'll just have to balance the business with the technology and, you know. React always seems like the better option in most situations. Yeah, but I would say you're you're really biased in the no. fact that you really you're like a, a React no, fanatic. Though so I I do too love React, I, but I'm I, saying that these other frameworks really be on the watch out for them. Oh, yeah, um, they no, have no, no. their different purposes, yeah. but um, in terms of React, it's more of that. There are so many other. Um, frameworks that so that react supports that is based off of react like next.js if you want to do serv um, ba uh, server side rendering if you yeah. want to do a headless cms with gatsby um, and these are all something that's um what is considered seo friendly yeah. and seo is becoming huge in terms of like e-commerce and things that you are trying to sell so that's why um React has that edge over yeah. these certain frameworks, but obviously you want to look at uh, different industries and different companies to see what their goal is and what their product is. Um, but yeah, we've gone over um, a couple of few front end frameworks, but in terms of back end, what do you think? I feel like things have been pretty steady on the back end. Python for sure has made its like increase in popularity because yeah. of automation. Now we realize there's like a huge focus on automation even before 2020, but going forward, um, I think things are gonna pick up, um, in t especially in, in data handling and big data um, and just, I guess, processes overall yeah. that you want to, like think about it, a lot of companies have these processes that they kind of do over and over again that are really redundant they're going to want to go towards uh, Python, which will like Python for the language to automate certain things. Mm. Um, so I would say in 2021, that will continue to be something to look out for because um, automation has been uh, key for a lot of companies to catch up and move forward um, in terms of adapting to technology mm -hmm. and the changes in the industry. Yeah, of course, you know, the like you already said, uh, the back end moves far slower than the front end. It does. Yeah, so the back end moves a lot slower. I guess I'm like, <laughs> yeah, but the back end moves far slower than the front end uh, when it comes to all these, you know, new things. But uh, yeah, Python is definitely in the lead. Um, what do I see going forward? Apart from just simply, simply the languages, um, machine learning. I mean, it was very hot. It will definitely continue to be very hot. It 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 is it's it's definitely something if you're interested in you should pursue because it's a really cool it's a really cool um I don't know what to call it you know section it's really really cool you can do a lot of cool stuff and it's also probably to everyone's benefit to learn a little bit about the future because machine learning is already here um and it is a, it, it's in a lot of things but um i mean yeah and what else uh, so i would say like the majority of uh businesses have not caught up to machine learning mm -hmm. i would say the uh, the front runners are the ones who are already t taking the changes and pushing forward the innovation for it um, but I, I think everyone else is still playing catch up and will still continue to play catch up in 2021. Yeah. Um, some will kind of stay there um, mm. and kind of uh, adapt to how things go. Yeah. Um, but those who re who kind of realize that, you know, they need to continue to innovate mm. are the ones who will adapt 
and take on these new technologies that aren't essential for their businesses, but add value to it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah, machine learning is definitely something you want to consider. You know, and also it takes some time. Grab all the data you can. So <laughs> when you actually want to implement machine learning, you have the data. That for those who understand what I'm talking about, understand. But okay, so now we've kind of talked about the back end and languages that will probably take precedent going forward. Um, and then JavaScript. Yeah. Places. There's but also now, the cloud. Um, the cloud like is... Like AWS and all these things? AWS of course, and yeah. all these things. Um, the cloud has also have not, in terms of usage, has not changed uh, a lot. But I would say AWS has released some new cool features to mm. make um, creating a website or whatever product it is um, to be almost instantaneous yeah. within the environment that they provide. Um, so they're making that a lot easier for just, you know, your average person, your small business to run and start up a website. Um, so that's um, that's something that's new. Um, but obviously, there's still a need for developers if they're using something on the cloud. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think overall, Things have made interesting changes, and especially in technology, things have moved faster than it has ever had yeah. in 2020 than any other year before because of this dire need to adapt, right? Um, I'm really excited for 2021. Um, what exactly are you looking forward to? I'm just looking forward to what, you know, after everything that has happened this year, I think going forward, people are going to be releasing out competitive uh, products mm. that compete against Uber, compete against DoorDash. There is going to be new um, new competition on the market. Mm. There's, I would say there's a lot of uh, products that will kind of support businesses more digital products yeah it's actually interesting because me and my a friend of mine uh during the coronavirus uh, you know the coronavirus pandemic or i guess we're still in the midst of it i don't know um we were talking about how the you know all these doordash and uber eats and all of them were just yeah. servicing restaurants and they significantly were especially for small mom and pop restaurants where it, it's it's just hurting the business in, tremendously you know, a lot of them are not making profits from, you know, people who order these uh, restaurants. Yeah, I was just and, at yeah, Velvet uh, Taco yesterday. Yeah. And it said on there, um, thank you for using our our online platform. Because mm -hmm. if you like order online from or order directly from their store, mm -hmm. they get 20% more, more of the mar like 20% mar more margin from mm -hmm. their like the cost than if you were to use DoorDash or some other delivery yeah. app. And, you know, the thing is that these, um, you know, these services are so disjointed from the restaurant that communication is off. Um, most often, if if Uber Eats does something wrong or if this uh, delivery service does something wrong, it doesn't reflect on the, the driver's services. It reflects on the, you know, restaurants. So those hurt, hurt things. But we're discussing about how can we make that better and, you know, try to see how we can benefit the restaurants and the customers. And the customers. And take, you know, and take kind of a, a beating, you know, because the middleman uh, is just the middleman. Uh, but if they can take a beating to just benefit these two, that kind of service will definitely be really, you know, it definitely be loved, of course. But it's very difficult to do, especially when you're if you're dealing with what they call it. If you're dealing with um contractor to driver, you know how you know you gotta somehow appease them. How are you gonna make them money? And it's, it's a tough, it's a tough line to work uh, walk. But definitely going forward, that's gonna be something that's gonna change, especially now that everyone is ordering. I hope another company competition is going to come around to really shake the uh, system because right now you know the middlemen are making all the money i never use uber eats doordash any other things they're just too expensive and they're unreliable 
and honestly just don't like the services i mean you can order a taco for five dollars and delivery is like fifteen dollars and then you have to pay tip i'm like no i'm good of course it's not that outrageous but you know it's just it's too expensive for me and it's just i can't i usually can't justify it especially when it doubles the price of everything yeah no, I'm sure good. <laughs> yeah it doesn't really double the price but it does add on a hefty fee and then you feel obligated to tip the driver as well yeah but yeah um these delivery apps they have advantages and mm. i think a lot of people are so grateful for them because if if we didn't have these apps um and these services the whole 2020 would be so different like so many people rely on uber eats and doordash and whatever grubhub app it is for delivery because mm. you know sometimes we just want the convenience of having it delivered to our place especially if we if we have to work um and we don't want to prepare things. I, I know like now some people say that their work life balance has kind of like dissipated and work kind of meshes in with their personal life. Mm. So I think, you know, that has been a lifesaver for people who, uh, who, you know, work from home and kind of, you know, that gets meshed in with their personal life and they don't have time for themselves. Yeah. Um, but it's just a really awesome uh, convenience uh, yeah, I mean, thing. of course, you know, this yeah, paying for convenience is is something we do on a day to day. So we pay a little extra if it's just more convenience, time saving, or allows us to do something else while while we get what we want. Um, so yeah, I, I I you know, but yeah, it's a good thing. But these services definitely are not good, especially for the <laughs> businesses. Like like they really are hurting the. They hurt yeah, both sides. They're hurting all three sides. But I would I would not say that they hurt more so that in this situation it actually you know is another solution to get more customers um, for these restaurants. Of course, yeah. But yeah, um, other things. Um, I mean, restaurant is only like one side of things. Um, if you have heard recently, Bitcoin shot up. Um, Bitcoin is, will always shoot up when there's any sort of global anything. Yeah, that's just how. I don't, I don't know works. what the the correlation to it was, but even in twenty uh, twenty one. The idea with Bitcoin is, we're in a post apocalyptic era, and <laughs> Bitcoin is the only thing that's gonna be accepted. So that's why Bitcoin always goes up, if anything is global threatening. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's, it's the end of the year for sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't, I can't really put, I don't really know anything. I mean, I used to follow cryptocurrency like that and I used to think it was the future, but it's far too unstable, um, unpredictable, unreliable for it to be used yet. Yeah. But the thing is like digital payments have been like increasingly more popular i know businesses are trying to encourage their customers to use digital payments uh, and i'm not saying like uh i'm talking about like you know you have your credit card but maybe you want to use it with the touchless pay with the mm -hmm. google app or an ipay or whatever it is because mm -hmm. i know my credit card company um with chase yeah they encouraged us chase to <laughs> Oh, come on now yeah. they can encourage us uh, as you know a customer to use the pay um to use digital pay yeah. to get more points uh for your purchases or something like that yeah. so now going forward they're definitely digital wallets digital payments are going to be more popular um some places accept them some places will have like their own application that they want you to use instead like mm. walmart for some reason will not take digital payments yeah because they're they're smart they know what they're doing but um the reason why i think is that in, i think in the future um cryptocurrency or just like some sort of digital coin will be created by these companies um as a way as like a different way of payment um and we can go into that in another podcast uh, to kind of yeah. dissect what that really means but yeah um, really look uh, into that. Also, blockchain um, may be um, also tied in with that. So 2021, you might see um, more digital currencies pop out. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if we'll see digital. Well, yeah, we probably would. Yeah, definitely. 
but of course yeah. the, the, <laughs> i was just thinking like you know you know somehow replace the dollar uh no no, no i think it's just like um, um a way of uh, of exchange but yeah. yeah that is also very exciting because you know the digital wallets um I don't know if you already have one or ever used a digital wallet, but they're actually really convenient, which means that if you left your wallet at home, you can just use your phone to pay. I mean, I, I almost never actually take my wallet. In fact, I've never really dealt with cash like on a regular basis for over two years, over three. Uh, wow. I download usually all the apps. Um, like if it's a place I go to regularly, like Walmart or Sam's, I, I love... I love, love, love the convenience, especially the uh, self-checkout that everyone is just now getting into. In Sam's Club, you can just go fill up your card, scan everything, and leave and never have to stand in line. It's brilliant. Um, you don't have to. And it, like it's and now Walmart has it. So you can actually go to Do Walmart. Really? Yeah, you can go to Walmart, get an item, scan it, pay for it, have your receipt, and walk out without even going to a single register. Sam's has been doing that for a minute now, and I've been loving it. I don't have well, to no, talk there's to anyone. It's a self-checkout thing. It's a self-checkout. I think on your phone. Oh, so you have the Walmart app? Because I know Walmart does it through an app. Yeah, so that's why they basically don't allow you to pay with um, Apple Pay or... Well, you can always use oh, Samsung yeah. Pay. But I guess like you have to get the app. Because they, they, they want you to download the app, and they want to keep you in this ecosystem because they know they can advertise more to you, and they can... They can, uh, you know, they can sell you more. Like yeah. now, you go to the Sam's Club app, you just click scan and go. It it figures out where you are. I uh, figures out the, it figures out what um, location you are yeah. automatically. And then you just scan anything. If you are at the gas station, you scan the gas station and it just propagates everything there. You pay. You never have to bring out your wallet. Don't have to touch. Yeah, anything. that's true. So if I you share, um, if you share membership cards, especially like if you have a yeah, exactly. Card, that's the big thing. Uh, yeah, <laughs> just so. give it to your mom. Yeah. Take. You're like, mom, you can take the card. I have my own. Exactly. Card. Yeah, <laughs> this is not even my card. I don't know if Sam is gonna revoke my access, but yeah, this is not even my card. It's my uh, sister's card. So we just use it, and it's oh man, it's incredible. You just scan and go. So I haven't been using cash for anything really. And of course, there's the privacy and everything. Um, but mine is, yeah, they really know everything. So what yeah. does it matter? But I guess um, along the lines of, you know, Bitcoin and blockchain, data is a huge issue. Hmm. Uh, oh, no, our camera died. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but we, we'll still continue the podcast. We, um, we can uh, we can do like a part two and then finish that. Oh, out. yeah. OK, yeah. let's do a part yeah. two. So we're going to do a part two. Um, I guess, yeah, thank you guys for joining us for this one. We're going to do a part two. You're definitely gonna, it's going to yeah. continue with all these things. We're going to talk a little more on what we expect 2020 to look like. 2021. 2021, yeah. 2021. <laughs> but anyways, thank you guys for tuning in, and happy holidays. All right. Merry Christmas, guys. Merry Christmas.